So every couple of years, something will happen in the shop that will pucker me right up and sort of make me debate why I do what I do. And I hope what's happened with this little router bit here kind of fills my quota, buys me some good uh, safety karma for the foreseeable future. Now, all the other near misses I've had seem to fall primarily into two camps. The first one I think is what happens to most of us. I was either working like extremely rushed or I was doing something often be trying to save time that I knew was kind of sketchy, trying to use a tool in an unusual way, you could say. I've had my share of those. And then the other camp that things seem to kind of fall into is that just a straight up like equipment or like component failure, something happens that's like very explainable, something went wrong, some kind of manufacturing defect or something. But the things that led to this nice banana shaped router bit here, I'm not actually 100% sure what caused this. I'm gonna try to be super transparent as to what my actions were leading up to this, but several things happened in my short lived relationship with this router bit that uh, makes it just a little bit more murky as to what may have caused this. Now, before this video is over, I will go over who made this router bit, but I don't want this video to just be a slander on the company. I don't know if it's all their fault. I think some of it, the blame does lie on me, but I just thought it'd be good to kind of share this information and definitely uh, important for me going forward. So this router bit arrived in the mail and the very first day I went to use it was actually at a customer's house. I was installing this breakfast nook I had built and it's an old house. And if you do any built-in work, you end up scribing and like contouring a lot of the trim to make it look nice and clean. And actually the lid assembly I was using is about an one and an eighth inches tall. So it's actually beyond the capacity of this router bit. So for the very first cuts and the very first time I powered on my router with this router bit chucked up, I actually had removed these two guide bearings. You know, I had never run it with these top bearings attached. So that is the first thing that adds some uncertainty into everything that followed. This is one of the more expensive router bits for this size that I've ever purchased. So, you know, I was well aware of this nice shiny thing, you know, it was sticking out the tip of my router. I was well aware of it. So it actually drove home in my passenger seat. So I'm giving this detail because I think there's very little chance that I accidentally um, like dropped this thing to bend it or anything. And it's in flawless condition. I mean, the cutters are still in great shape and everything. So the router bit worked great that first day. So the next week I'm working here in the shop again. I need a small pattern bit and I end up reaching for the router that still has this chucked up from the week before. I reattach the two top bearings and then when I go to fire it up, you know, everything that played out sort of feels like it moves in slow motion. But from the second I turned it on, there's just like this violent feeling in my hand that starts to build. The noise is not that like standard ramping up to full speed of the router. It's this like gurgling kind of sound. And thankfully I was standing basically right next to this power strip and I just yanked the power cord right out of the wall. Um, you know, it's one of those moments where the uh, like flight or fight kind of instinct. And you know, I'm just like, oh, everything's okay. No real destruction. And you know, time kind of moves oddly, I feel like in these moments. So I'm guessing the time from me hitting the switch to me yanking the cord out of the wall, probably only like two or three seconds. And in that amount of time, I mean, this thing totally bent itself over, uh, destroyed the base plate on my router. And I just don't know what caused this to happen. I never actually cut anything with these top bearings attached. This deformation and the destruction to the router all occurred just from firing it up and the centrifugal forces of starting to spin this thing up caused it to take on this shape. So why did this happen? The very first thing that I think is interesting is before I bought this router bit, you know, that solid carbide pattern bits are kind of all the rage right now. And even I, you know, I just couldn't resist all that nice marketing so I decided they're gonna to have to cut better. But before that, I actually used these uh, mini mega router bits from Infinity. As you see, this one's got quite a bit of love to it. It needs to get cleaned. Um, this one is the one I originally used. It got cleaned recently, but the cutters on it just are burning a lot. I sort of think it's time to just move on. And this one actually looks almost brand new still if you look at it. If you compare it to the uh, other router bit that I've had problems with is both bigger, um, longer, and on the scale, it's actually heavier than this bit. This bit, however, though, the reason it looks new is because very shortly after I bought it, I actually ended up casing my router on the floor and uh, it actually bent this bit. So this bit doesn't cut well anymore, pure trash at this point, but it's still here with me due to some kind of inbred hoarder tendencies I have. That said, I can chuck this up, I turn it on, you can see it's very evidently wobbling in the router, but it doesn't cause the stem to bend over. 
So I think if purely I had done something like bent this, if it had somehow got bumped on the drive home, I don't think that should have been enough if this was well designed and manufactured to cause this kind of bending. I think there was just like a poor material choice in the manufacturing of this bit. So then who manufactures this? Well, this is an ultra sheer bit. This is made by Woodpeckers, which is a brand that I have pretty high respect for. So I'm kind of surprised to see this. This is a solid carbide bit, but if you actually read about this and Woodpeckers is super transparent about these, all these kind of pattern bits that don't have the same cutter diameter as the shank, turns out it's like a steel stem uh, brazed to a carbide head. You can see this on a magnet. The uh, steel definitely has a stronger magnetic force than the carbide. So on some like true solid carbide bits, um, they just don't have nearly as much magnetic attraction as uh, these st steel stems. If you are wondering, it seems like from some Google searches, carbide is about twice the weight of just like regular steel. So that would make for a denser, heavier router bit. But as I said, this one that's bent, which is heavier and longer, doesn't seem to be uh, doesn't seem to banana over like this. So I don't know if that alone actually has anything to do with it. I just did end up looking up that as one of the factors that maybe could be contributing to this. But now to be fully transparent, I do want to address a couple of things I was doing when this destruction happened that may have contributed to it. First off, if you read the uh, label here on the shank, it does say 21,900 is the max RPM. Now these Makita routers that I use, they're just the regular trim routers, extremely popular. They don't have any like uh, definitive number settings, but it does say on the label that it's from 10,000 to 30,000 RPMs. And they give you this little dial indicator that goes from one to six. Mine tend to live at about five. That's just the speed that feels pretty nice. I actually don't think about it a whole lot. So I would guess that this was probably ripping about 25,000 RPMs. So definitely faster than what's recommended on this shank of this. And then the obvious thing that can be user error is uh, insertion length. Now, if you look closely at this bit, I unfortunately can't get this stop collar off here because of how bent this is, but there is a line drawn right next to that stop collar. And there appears to be what is like the very pinpoint of an arrow there. So I do wonder if that was um, supposed to be like the stop line, but the way they've just like laser engraved or printed this stem, it doesn't actually tell you it's a stop line. It just doesn't really catch your attention. That said, I did go and dig out the uh, packaging that came with this. It's a little Ziploc bag and then has this tiny little piece of paper with it. I didn't go through this very thoroughly, but it does tell you that you should aim for one and an eighth inch insertion. This is the same message they give you with the half inch shank, but I didn't read this and perhaps it would have been good for me to. If what was going to make the difference between this thing bananaing and not, is actually getting it all the way up to this collar in the collet, I sort of feel like that should be written here on the actual stem. And I guess my big question then is, can the speed of this thing or not getting it all the way up to that collet cause this kind of deformation? In my opinion, it shouldn't. Again, I wasn't even cutting with this thing. It was just trying to get it up to speed. The router was trying to accelerate it. So to me, still pretty alarming, but I'm well aware that there was a few things in my process that perhaps uh, didn't help this not happening. If you told me the only way to get this thing not to banana was to follow those two things to a T, I would not be comfortable using this router bit. I think there should be a little bit more margin of error. And maybe a telltale that this is actually not the best bit to design is white side router bits, a company that I often view as like the top tier gold standard of router bits. I can't always afford them, especially if it's a bit I'm not gonna be using super often. They don't actually make a pattern bit like this with the top and bottom bearings in a quarter inch shank. So perhaps that's a tell all, you know, like they just know that this is just a little bit too much force to expect out of a small quarter inch stem like this. Speaking of wide side router bits, that's kind of where this whole fiasco started. Making that breakfast nook out of hard maple, I knew sanding the edges of that table was gonna be pretty time consuming. And the like half inch big boy pattern bit I have, this old CMT bit, it's been through the works at this point. I'd be getting a lot of burning, especially around those radius corners. So instead of dealing with a bunch of sanding, I thought, you know, I think it's time to just buy a new pattern bit. And while going to the cart to check out, you know, these ultra sheer line was gonna save me over $100 over the white side equivalent. I thought, you know what, I'll try this quarter inch shank bit as well. So that half inch bit, when it showed up, it had problems right out of the box. It was leaving a line in the middle of my cut. It seems like the cutters at the top and the bottom weren't machined quite right. So they were leaving a different diameter. So I had this line. So I still had a bunch of sanding. 
super annoying in the middle of a project, but Ultra Shear or Woodpeckers was super responsive. Uh, they said they send me a new bit as soon as possible. Unfortunately, they were out of stock by the time this happened. And incidentally, the day that replacement bit showed up is the day that this also happened. They haven't responded to my email about this bit. Um, that's a little frustrating. I don't even want to return it at this point. I think it would just be good to get some acknowledgement that uh, this sucks. It sucks to pony up the cash for those white side bits, but I mean, the quality is unquestionable. I've never had a problem with them. As for woodpeckers, I do own a few woodpeckers tools and they are a complete joy to use. As much as I like to make fun of them for being like the most expensive anodized red aluminum you can buy, the quality in the other tools, some measuring little squares, as well as this like crosscut uh, exact 90 miter gauge I have, quality is fantastic. They're a joy to use every single time. What I sort of feel like is woodpeckers, when they first came on the market, they just had a few like flagship products. They were unquestionable quality. Every once in a while, they'd have this special tool release, just like some kind of small niche tool that was highly coveted. And now it seems like every single day they're pushing out another tool. And I think they just kind of fallen victim to, I think what happens to so many great small companies is they get into this like infinite growth mentality, like more sales, more products. And I think at, there's just a point where you cannot make everything 100% top-notch quality when you're just trying to push out that many products. And in my eyes, with my experience, I'm just done experimenting with the Ultra Shear line. I mean, this scared the shit out of me and I'm just not willing to do it anymore. So Woodpeckers, I'll continue to use your tools. Personally, um, I'll stick with Whiteside when I can afford it or it's a bit I use a lot. And then I think these infinity bits, I mean, I looked this up, I bought these back in November of 2020. Uh, these have lasted great. And I think I'm just gonna buy another set of these as uh, the two that aren't bent have been used quite a bit. And it'd be nice to get some nicer cut quality back. So anyways, that's my little adventure through uh, bending this router bit. I hope you guys found that useful. And I just really tried to be transparent in what happened. And yeah. Thanks again for everybody for watching and see you guys next time. Thank you.